Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, President of the Open to Hope Foundation, and today I have the privilege of interviewing Ann M. Carson. I live in Melbourne, Australia. Now, you uh, did some work in relationship to the death of your husband, right? Were you doing the poetry before he died? I, I did. I did poetry for 10 years. It's a 10-year apprenticeship to get a book out, and it takes that long to build a literary reputation. My first book has now come out, and the middle section of that book is poems about my husband, about our relationship, and then, very sadly, he got sick, and so there are poems about his sickness and his death and my bereavement. All right, and what is the name of your book? It's called Removing the Kimono. So this poem came about because I think in the West we're not very good at supporting pe people in bereavement, particularly after the first sort of, you know, first phase after someone dies, there's the funeral and that's a very supported time. But then the person who's bereaved is left pretty much to their own devices. So I was thinking about this poetically and... Um, looking at other cultures and seeing that they do bereavement much better than we do. So somehow that went into my poetic imagination and what came out is this poem which is called The Dresser Removes the Kimono of Mourning and it's based on an imagined ritual for bereavement. Let me read The Dresser Removes the Kimono of Mourning. I kneel on tummy and close my eyes. A gust of cool air tells me the rice paper screen has opened. Orange blossom fragrance enters with the dresser. Her feet in cotton tubby shush as she slips behind me, unties the obi. Yards of brocade fall about me. I feel small, vulnerable as a girl just presented. Arms outstretched, she holds the kimono seam at each shoulder, slides fabric over my skin, silk, sibilant. Tori Hada rises. I wear only koshimaki and underrobe, light enough now to lift from tatami, a kite loosed from its tether. The robe is folded as prescribed, sleeve over body, whole in half, half again, wrapped in linen paper, placed in the lacquered box. I will not miss the silk, dark as midnight, though it had a touch of grandeur. The dresser's hand and arm ripple around me. I recall the movements in my mind's theatre, remember our rehearsals back and forth her hands are tireless eddying like wind over rice fields she is to empty me of grief a dark spirit emerges long as obi she is a no dancer drawing from my ears mouth nostrils the colors of sorrow a final red arterial scarf from the belly, drawn out, dissolving in ether. She has removed the inner and outer garments of my bereavement. Unmade, I prepare to start over, alone on tatami. Ah, beautiful, and thank you so much for being on our show today.